<clears throat> hey there my beautiful friends check it out guys i was planning on doing psalm 127 today but the lord just put it on my heart to do something different something simple so what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be in enjoying the story of luke 23 and the passion of the christ the crucifixion of our savior the the beautiful build up to Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, whatever you want to call it, that was Good Friday. Amen. So, that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to be reading out of a Bible that's very special to me. Let's get into some prayer, all right? Heavenly Father, we just want to come before you today, Lord, filled with such appreciation for the redemption plan that you put in motion. So changed by the transformative nature of rebirth father god and everything that happens when we come to the foot of the cross i thank you for my life lord though i was alive before i was not living you have given me everything you are the fuel for our existence, you are the singular source of goodness and truth, grace and love and mercy. And we open ourselves to you, Father God, to be channels for you here on earth, to be conduits, Father God, for your beautiful spirit. We want to ask that this video today, Father God, that it nourish us, that it Help us to be based strongly in, in the, the, the truth of the gospel and the truth of the crucifixion, the truth of the resurrection, Lord. That we could stand unwavering in the winds of modernity and the flesh and declare the truth that is Jesus Christ. We also want to ask for this video, Lord, to be able to reach the hearts and souls of anyone out there not yet at the foot of the cross that they could feel called, Lord. We also want to ask that it be able to reach those who are perhaps backslidden from their place with you, Lord, that they could be reinvigorated and revived. We want to pray for a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves. Help us to be your bright and shining city on a hill, Lord. Your royal priesthood, your peculiar people, those that you have called and set aside from the world. And we pray all of this in the holy, righteous, glorious, and singularly saving name of your Son and our Savior, my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. In your heavenly, infinite, and eternal name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let me get a drink real quick. Check it out. I hope you guys enjoy this as much as me. Probably not. I'm kind of a, I'm a little bit of a book nerd anyways. And then you add the Bible into that and I'm, I'm really a book nerd. So, this is my holy Bible. It's one of many family Bibles that I have collected. And this one is from 1872. And uh, it's amazing. You find yourself, I would encourage anyone out there to get your hands on some old Bibles, especially family Bibles, because they'll usually be filled with all sorts of documents and things that just make you feel there's this very tangible, real connection, not only to the Word of God, but to these fellow believers, to these, to these other people in their lives, amen, and it's such a beautiful thing, um, so as I said, we're going to be reading from um, Luke 23 today. I've actually bookmarked it back here. And just to prove the point, I bookmarked it with an obituary that was one of multiples found in this Bible for a man named Dr. R.W. Spangler who passed away July 12th, 1887. And what's interesting is 
he passed away in a town called Milledgeville, Ohio. Now, I don't know where Milledgeville is at, but I was born and raised in Ohio, and so I think it's very interesting that, um, you know, I lived in Ohio until I was an adult, and then I moved out here. Well, I moved a few times, but basically I wound up here in New Mexico. And then wouldn't you know it, I find this Bible here in New Mexico. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Let's check this out, guys. Again, we're going to be doing the entirety of the chapter of Luke 23. And I really hope you guys enjoy this. Be looking for a video probably tomorrow night that focuses a little more on the resurrection. But let's get into this. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. <coughs> Excuse me. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priest and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether this man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priest and scribe stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverted the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one unto them, at the least, at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Let that line really, let that verse really, really sink into you. They were, not, not only did they not believe Jesus, but they were willing to let a murderer out that Jesus would die, that Jesus would stay in prison, right? Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them, but they cried, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priest prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, 
which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, for behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death, and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. <coughs> And a superstition, I'm sorry, and a superscription also is written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. <coughs> I am so sorry, guys. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we, indeed, justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This part always touches me so much. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. <coughs> It said that the it, it said guys that the temple the the holy of holy the veil that separated them from it was um, not only ripped not only rended in half but rended in half from top to bottom as heaven was meeting earth and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice he said Father into thy hands I commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breast and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man, and just, the same had not consented to the council and the deeds of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. <coughs> and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man was before laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. 
And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath or Shabbat day according to the commandment. All right, guys. <coughs> Man, guys, I apologize so much for this cough over the past few videos. You guys have got to be as ready as I am for it to be over. It's been a rough one. Um, we have such a beautiful gift from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He saves us from ourself. He saves us from just punishment for the iniquitous state in which we reside. I just want you to know that while Jesus prayed in the garden at Gethsemane, tears, or I'm sorry, drops of blood, sweating blood, so intense were his prayers, and yet his apostles, his disciples, they couldn't stay awake to do the same. And, um, you know, he asked, he prayed to Father God, you know, if this cup, meaning the coming crucifixion, can be taken from me, then take it. But if not, your will, Father, not mine, be done. And, um, he went through a mock trial, two mock trials, was beaten brutally, stripped of his flesh, crown of thorns placed atop his head, and um, I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but the, 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 the result of mankind's fall in the garden, one of the results was that Adam was told that he would have to go and work in the thorns and the thistles of the earth, and Jesus is Adam 2.0. He is that, 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 that achievement that Adam could not achieve. And he took on his head the thorns, the curse that was placed on humanity because he is here to undo what we have done, what we have caused. And um, after making his way to Calvary, to Golgotha, the place of the skull, um, and being crucified, to look down and see your own people reviling you, spitting on you, playing a game for your clothing. I want you to know that he looked at those people and he looked out across all that he could survey with his earthly eyes, but he looked far beyond that. He looked across time to me and to you and to the entirety of our existence and the thoughts that filled him were not thoughts of woe is me they weren't thoughts of you know damn these people they were thoughts of love they were thoughts of redemption and salvation and I just want you to know that he thought of you, he thought of me, personally, on a level so personal we can't even, we can't even think of ourselves in a way as personally as he thought of us. And he knew all our prior mess-ups, and he knew the mess-ups that are yet to come, as there will be. But his heart was filled to bursting with love. And I want you to know that they didn't, they didn't kill him there. He gave up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. He did what was needed to be done to fulfill Father God's plan that we could have this relationship with the Lord. That we could be indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That we could have a home, an assured home. And um, it's just a profoundly beautiful thing, guys. I'm so glad to be able to continue to share with you all. 
If you're not already, I'd like to have you subscribe, like, share, all of that. But, um, obviously if you want to leave any comments, do that down below. Prayer requests down below. Um, Father God loves you guys. I love you too, but Father God loves you guys so much. Jesus loves you so much. The Holy Spirit fills us with the mind of Christ and the love of Christ. If we will get the flesh out of the way. Um, man, guys, go out there. Be bold. Be active in the faith. And just remember, yes, yes, our Lord was crucified, but He is crucified no longer. We serve a risen Savior. He is not hanging on that Roman tree. He is not beaten and broken in the flesh. He is a risen Savior. He is a warrior of a mighty nature that we cannot even fully fathom. Let that be fuel for your walk, fuel for your appreciation, fuel for your gratitude. And I will see you guys in the next video, alright? I love y'all.